A two-mile-wide tornado has swept through a southern suburb of Oklahoma City in the U.S., leaving devastation in its wake. This is the search for survivors in Moore, Oklahoma, where during Studio B this afternoon, an enormous tornado cut a path of destruction across that city. It erased entire sections of the city of Moore. Moore, Oklahoma, where I'm standing right now. This is about 10 miles just to the south of Oklahoma City. This is not in a rural area. This isn't out in the middle. On May 20, 2013, Moore, Oklahoma was hit by an EF-5 tornado. Anna Hunt, a native of Moore and a junior on the Duke women's soccer team, was at home with her mother when the tornado struck. It was about a mile away. It was like hitting one of the biggest theaters like in Oklahoma that's really close to me. My mom and I were like, we should probably go in just to be safe. Like, You never know which way these things are going to go and stuff like that. And we had the TV on in her room so you can still hear it. And then we had uh, the emergency kit radio that plays. And then we had my phone and I have a tornado app so you can like stream the news while you're in the shelter. And we had everything until we lost service and then we were just kind of sitting ducks. Anna and her mother took shelter in a fortified closet and waited out the storm. I remember when the tornado was hitting, that was terrifying because you think, oh my gosh, you just think the most negative thoughts in your head. But my mom and I were grabbing each other as tight as we could. I was like, Mom, I love you. Like, no matter what happens, I just want you to know I love you. And she was praying. And I remember after it passed, um, sometimes really big tornadoes like that can have spin-off tornadoes. It doesn't happen very often, but it has happened before. So we were sitting there after, because it gets pitch black, and it's dead silent after it passes, because you can't hear anything else. My mom's like, maybe we should go outside now. And I was like, mm, I feel like we should wait until somebody comes to see if there's people home. And then um, some of our neighbors from down the street, like way down the street whose houses weren't affected came running down the street and they were like is anybody home is anybody home are you guys okay because they split up between all the houses that had been hit in my neighborhood and um, when we heard them was when we were like okay it's fine to come outside because these people know more of what's going on than we do so we came outside and at first we couldn't get out because of all the debris and the way it had covered all the doorways and things like that so um, they some of them tried to come in to help us clear some things so we could get out Rache Jackson, a senior on the women's basketball team, was visiting her cousin in Moore and found herself in a similar circumstance. When I was going in, I was really not too scared at first until I heard the train. Because at first I was calm, like, okay, this happens all the time. But then when you hear it coming and you know how severe it is, it's like your whole perspective changes and then you go into like a a mode to where you're like, oh my God, I just hope I make it out of this alive. I don't care about anything else right now, but I hope I make it out alive. I hope my family is safe. It made me realize like how precious life is and how much, you know, everyone should cherish their life because you never know when that day could come. And you know, you if you go, you wanna go with like no regrets and be able to, you know, say that I had some type of enjoyment in my life and just to cherish it. And you know, playing a basketball game and you know, missing a free throw, missing a shot, losing a game, is not, it's not, it does not even compare to you know what could really happen in life. We lost literally everything. So people sent clothing for like me, my brother, my sister, my parents. They sent soccer gear. They sent the little things that you think like, oh, like you have them on the regular, but when you lose everything like that, you don't really have them. It's really heartwarming to know that like you're, even though you're alone kind of in this and nobody really knows what you're going through, like people are there for you and are willing to help you 100%. Like even Larry Minato, who I don't know personally, like was so kind and so like gracious and everything. I was completely surprised. I had no idea. Um, I remember one day Robbie had called me saying that they had met with the NCAA and that yeah, we had clearance to do this great thing and I told my parents and we were all like so shocked because we didn't expect anything like this. Because I mean, you can't really expect, you can't expect things like this. You think you're really grateful for all the support and things you've gotten, but that was just a whole nother level and my parents were absolutely shocked. We're still kind of shocked to this day.